and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at the brand new Photoshop Express application. Now, the Photoshop Express application has actually been, uh, it's, it's not new to the iPhone, it's just a new name, um, but it also has some new functionality, which we'll take a look at. So, Photoshop Express used to be Photoshop.com Mobile. I think I like the shorter name better. Well, you know, for those of you who have already been using the Photoshop.com mobile app, uh, there's not a lot of things that are different here, so you'll be right at home. There is a new Adobe um, icon there at the b bottom left-hand corner, and the beauty of this one is I love it because those are my photos. Yes, I actually got the honor of uh, having some of my photos put right into the app itself. So besides that, <laughs> besides the selfish uh, plug there, uh, you also have some tips and techniques and just things that will help you um, have some ideas about how you would use the app. So let's move off that. Let's go ahead and go to edit. So we'll tap the edit screen. And of course, since this is an iPhone, we have the ability to select a photo uh, that we've already taken or one that's on our camera roll. Or we can take a photo with the iPhone camera. And I'm using the iPhone 4, so I have the brand new camera here. So, of course, we take complete advantage of the new camera and the newer resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and say select photo and I have some uh, photos here on my camera roll that were taken with the iPhone 4 and we're just going to go ahead and select one of these and just do a little tweaking to it here. Let's go ahead and grab oh so many good shots and yes these were all taken in my studio with the iPhone. So we're going to go ahead and just grab one of these and let's see what we can do with this. Well, first thing I might want to do is you'll notice that we have some tools along the top. I'm going to go ahead and click the crop tool. There we go. And I actually have a choice of crop, straighten, rotate, and flip. We'll just go ahead and tap crop. And that brings up a standard crop that we can go ahead and adjust the way we want it. So you can use your finger and move it around and position it where you want. Now you have the ability to click OK or to cancel it and you even have the ability, this is a secret kind of hidden thing there, you have the ability to lock it to a specific aspect ratio. So instead of it letting me crop it all willy-nilly, I can say, no, 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 keep it a one-to-one, three-by-four, so forth and so on. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK or tap OK, and that will perform the crop. Now, the, um, you notice that we have some little arrows down here. There's an undo and redo, and of course the save button, which we're going to get to later. But you also have other adjustments along the top. So I'll just go ahead and tap one of the adjustments here. And this adjustment gives me the ability to adjust exposure, saturation, tint, convert it to a black and white, or adjust the contrast. Now I'm not going to go through all of those. They're kind of self-explanatory, but I'll go through one or two here. So if I tap exposure, here's the cool thing about it, is that you use your finger to go left and right to make the adjustment. So in this case, think of exposure as zero being in the middle of the screen, negative exposure to your left, positive exposure to your right. So the minute I start dragging to the left, the photo gets darker. The minute I start dragging to the right, the photo gets brighter. So uh, we'll just adjust the exposure just a little bit there. And again, same thing, click OK or tap OK or cancel. So we'll tap OK. Now, of course, I also, let's, let's do one more here. We have the ability to adjust the contrast there. So same thing. And in this case, it's negative or positive, just like before. And I'm just going to go ahead, in this case, and crank up the contrast just a wee bit. All right, so we'll tap OK on that, and we'll do one more. Let's do uh, saturation. Now, saturation, same thing. Left is negative saturation, so taking the color out of the photo. And that kind of, you know, lets you decide how you want to process that black and white, if you want to go all the way to black and white, or really crank it up, which I would never do that to a person. So we'll just cancel out of that. All right, next we have uh, Sketch, Soft Focus, and Sharpen. And these are different effects that you can apply. So Sketch gives it a sketch effect. These might be good for landscapes. Uh, soft Focus gives it a very nice soft focus. That's good for a beauty shot like this, where it might have been too sharp. And then, of course, we have Sharpen, which is the opposite. Now, in this case, Sharpen goes from 0 on the left-hand side to 100 all the way on the right-hand side. So super, super crazy sharp to not sharp at all. And again, you decide. So we'll cancel out of that. And see, we did those. Let's go to the last one, which are effects and borders. So we'll tap effects. 
we have the ability to choose vibrant. Um, let's go here. I can tap it there. There we go. Pop. And it's kind of hard tapping the sideways. There we go. Vignette blur. I use that one quite a bit. Puts a nice vignette and blurs the edges of it. And then, of course, we have the... Um, so we can tap it here. There we go. We have the warm vignette and white glow and rainbow. And if you slide this over, you get a couple more. You get a nice black and white, if I can get to it there. There we go. Soft black and white. And you have white glow. All right, so we'll cancel out of those. And we'll go to one of the ones that I do use quite a bit, and that's the borders. I like the border effects. So we can just put a standard rectangular white border, one with rounded corners, kind of a ellipse. And then we have these, uh, this one here. My right hand doesn't work. We have the uh, soft edge. We have the vignette. And if we slide over, we get a couple more. We have the rough edge. I do like that one. I use that one quite a bit. We have uh, the halftone. And we have the film emulsion. So I'm going to go back to one of my favorites, which is the rough edge. And we'll tap OK on that and lock that one in. Okay, so now let's say we're done editing the photo. What are, our, what are our choices? Well, we can save the photo. Save and exit just puts it on your camera roll. It makes a copy of it, so you still have the original unretouched photo. You have save and upload, which will save and upload it to your account at Photoshop.com. You don't have to have an account to use the app, but if you do, you get some free online space to share your photos and also access your photos in the app save and post to Facebook and save and post to TwitPic. So you have your choice of also sharing them on the two, two of the most popular social networks on the planet, Facebook and uh, TwitPic. And if you do pick one of those, it will go ahead and save the photo to the camera roll. That's what it's doing now. And you might notice, for those of you who have used this before, it takes a few extra seconds to save it on an iPhone 4 because it is a higher resolution file. Now we have the option of uh, uploading it and putting in the description for the photo. And this is the description that will go along with it. And the same thing applies for TwitPic. You would get the ability to put in your, twit or your tweet message to go along with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that. I'm not ready to post that one just yet. And by the way, you don't have to edit the photo. You can be right in the upload screen to do any one of those things as well. Now, we'll just go to online. Online gives us the ability to access the online photos that I already have on Photoshop.com. So I just go ahead and tap my iPhone shots and these are some of the shots that you saw earlier in the Adobe icon. So yes, they did come directly from my iPhone. Here's a new one here that I shot at an aquarium. There we go. We'll get the polar bear. And of course this does work in uh, portrait and landscape mode. You can work either way. And once you tap a photo that you have online, you also have the ability of emailing that photo or link to that photo to another person even though that photo is not on your phone. So this is a great way for people to access a large library of photos without having to actually have those photos on the device itself. So Photoshop.com is where you can store and access these photos and of course you have settings to take you through the various settings including signing in and signing out of your various accounts. Alright, so there you have it. Now, you're probably saying, well, Terry, a lot of that seems like the version that was already out. So what's so new about this? Well, let's slide this out of the way for a minute. And let's go over to a different device that I just happen to have here. And this is the iPad. That's right. This is now a plus app for both the iPhone and iPad and you get the same abilities that you saw earlier. So we have the ability to go to our online gallery and of course on a nice big display, a nice big screen like this. So I can look at those same iPhone shots that we took earlier or saw earlier. I have the ability to edit. Now you're probably saying, well, that's great, but what are you going to edit from your iPad? In other words, the iPhone has a camera, so that makes sense that you would be able to edit from that. But why would you want to edit shots that you probably already edited once you put before you put them on the iPad to begin with. Well, you got to remember Apple also sells the camera connection kit. So, this is a little attachment 
actually comes in two forms. It comes in an SD card reader and one that has a USB port on the bottom of it to plug in directly to your camera, and I've demonstrated this before. So, how does this come into the equation? Well, if you can import your photos right onto your iPad from your camera, now you have a nice big display to edit and share them. So, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to take the camera connection kit and plug in a USB cable. Okay, but the other end of that cable is actually my dock connector. So I'm going to plug it into my iPhone because my iPhone technically is also a camera. And once I plug it in to the bottom of the iPad itself, there we go, the iPad switches over to the import mode for the actual iPad camera connection kit. So now, any shots that I have taken with my iPhone, or any other camera for that matter, including cameras that shoot RAW, I can bring those images in directly into my iPad. So I'll just import one of those from the iPhone. And it says, do I want to delete it when it's done? So now I'll say keep it. And it looks like it's done. So now we'll close out of that. We'll go back to Photoshop Express. We'll tap edit, and now I have the ability for my last import to grab that same photo that we just saw on the iPhone. And now I can edit doing the same things we saw earlier with a nice big display. So I have a crop, same thing we saw earlier. We'll go ahead and lock the crop down to a one-to-one. -one. There we go. Bring that in. One by one, I should say. And actually, I don't like that one. Let's do a 3x4. There we go. So we'll lock that in. We'll crop the photo. And we have the same kinds of controls. So sketch effect, soft focus, exposure, saturation, tint, brightness and contrast, black and white, so forth and so on. You have your undos. You have the ability to save. And, of course, share this photo on Facebook. The only thing this one doesn't have is I did not see the option to share it on Twitter. But you do have the option to share it on Facebook. Now, I'm going to cancel out of this editing just for a moment. And, yes, I'm sure I want to exit. And we'll go back. And one of the things I'll just give you a tip before I close here. One of the things I was looking for is, was, where are the settings? I don't see a settings button like I did on the iPhone. And it's there but it's under the Adobe icon and we'll get our settings there we go and we're all set so there you have it the new Photoshop Express application which is now a plus or universal binary application for both the iPhone iPod touch and the iPad so all iOS devices that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast my name is Terry White thanks for watching